I've done a few videos recently looking at um, the patch bays on semi-modular synths. Namely, so far, the Boehringer Neutron and the Boehringer Crave. And I want to take a look today at the patch bay on the Mother 32. And just give a brief explanation of how it works and how the default routing works within the semi-modular synth itself. And also, you know, the kind of like normalization behind the scenes um, inside the patch bay. The important thing that I've been stressing and kind of driving home here is when using the patch bay and patching into something, if we patch out of, say, LFO square, we patch that into the VCO mod, it doesn't break the internal routing where we patch out from the square, but it breaks it from the VCO mod. And um, we can demonstrate that by free fluid. If we leave the input plugged in for VCO mod, and if we listen to it, then th this should have no effect if we flick it to frequency, so it's more obvious. If we have a listen. So if we patch into the VCO mod. See that it's broken the normalization there. Similarly, patching into the external in overrides the normalization of the white noise connection. An example of how this breaks the normalization here can be seen when we use the filter to produce a sine wave when self oscillating. If we turn the resonance and mix up, and patch the keyboard to the cut off. And it's a dead lead into the external end to kill that. That's the VCO playing. resonating the VC mix is a standalone circuit connected to the mix 1 mix 2 VC mix control and VC mix inputs mix 1 is normalized to 0 volts and mix 2 to plus 5 so it can be used as either a voltage source a VCA a mixer or an attenuator because it has no place in the normalized signal path, it will need to be patched if you want to use it. I'll show a chart of the default internal routings here, where we can see the normalized signal flow. A really nice chap called Ian Smith, he drew this chart here, which shows uh, the connections and where the patch bay interconnects with the default routing which gives you a good idea of kind of what's going on a sign is it's multi-purpose um, however its default output is the clock source from the sequencer understanding the difference between modular and semi-modular it's not just the physical appearance of whether it's comprised of individual modules. And many of you know this, but it's surprising how many don't. So please just kind of bear with me. I'll just, you know, skim over this part. Um, but it's not just the physical appearance of whether it's comprised of individual modules or a prearranged collection of modules like in the Mother 32 or the Crave or the DFAM or Neutron. But that in fully modular synths, all connections have to be made with patch cables. Whereas in a semi-modular, internal default patchings do pre-exist, so they can be used without the need for external patching. Looking at the patch bay, we can see four inputs with circles around them. These are the gate inputs, being gate, run, stop, reset, and hold. The VCACV input is summed to the VCA, 
Uh, an LFO here, it, it'll add tremolo effects. It's um, it's permanently summed there. And the majority of the inputs work on being summed with the control knobs in the center of the 12 o'clock position. So anytime you patch in, it kind of it, that's it kind of default as it, as it comes in there. And if you, if, if you think about the um, the architecture of the actual patch point itself. It's a, it's actually a TRS rather than just a TR, which we'd use for patching. Um, so as it, as it plugs in, it, it leaves a connection to, to the summed position. Because the majority of the inputs do work on being summed with the control knob in the center, it gives you a minus five to plus five voltage of these inputs. Because the majority of the inputs do work on being summed with the control knob in the 12 o'clock position, a minus 5 to 5 volt voltage at these inputs will effectively create a full sweep from minimum to maximum. An important warning also is that the mulch should only ever be used to split a signal and not to mix two together because you can risk over voltage that way. A list of the assign options are here which can be selected from the settings menu through the sequencer. Uh, the inclusion of MIDI CC responses here to create voltage sweeps allows for some great modulation from external controllers. Other input adjustable uh, from setting page is the tempo input, which has four available modes, and I'll also include a list of MIDI CCs available for that. And program change messages here, just because they're pretty cool to play with. Like in previous videos, I'm not going to go into what each one of these does because they're self-explanatory again. Um, the manual, actually, for the mother is really, really good on this. It, it's well worth a read if you haven't already. I'm guessing a lot of you guys haven't, but I'm guessing there's a handful that haven't and just kind of, you know, make assumptions about how gear works. I know, I, I know I've met many recently since doing these videos on patch base who jumped to the same conclusions um, about where patching in actually breaks the normalization and, and, you know, kind of incorrectly, which explains why, you know, some people tell me that they, they struggle and they don't understand why they're not getting the results they expect that way. But it's, it's well worth remembering that you, you break where you patch in, not where you're patching out from. Anyway, I hope this has helped. As usual, just, you know, like, comment, subscribe, ask any questions down below. Many thanks. Thank you.